Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the penultimate match live from Academy Lanes in Haverhill, Massachusetts. My name is Greg Guiar, alongside Bob Lee. And Paul Grant and our entire team here at Spread Eagle Productions and Bowling Nerd Network. We're thrilled to have you here. As we watch Janet Park on lane 34 versus Ashley Breton on lane 33, who starts out with an eight pin drop. Janet Park was delayed in getting here because she had to take a group, uh, group photo with everyone from the Channel 5 bowling show. About a dozen people showed up for that photo. We've seen some of them before. Brenton got the 10. Wood pinwheels towards the 7. Not, nothing doing. Get that straightened out of then. Put a nine on the board and a ten for Ashley Breton to start out. Remember, all matches are one string. We're going down the stretch here. Both these teams, middle of the pack, and last night checked. We're looking to cover all the top matches as well, including with some of our top finishers right now: Penny Lane, Team Coca-Cola. JD Seamless Gunner, the Pricewood Flooring, and Harry's All Stars. Team Stars and Strikes, and Academy Chuckers was in seventh place as of the 18th match. After a slight ball return delay, Janet Bach comes back on the two pin. Hey! Ashley Brennan, originally from Waltham, Massachusetts. Now from Framingham in the Metro West. Statistics for each bowler, Janet Pocket, a high single of 197, a high triple of 459, and a high five of 721. <laughs> Ashley picks up another pin and it brings up Brittany Underwood and Kathy Boyd for D Generation X. In the black and green shirts versus Academy Chuckers wearing the yellow. Though I won't dare make it yellow. Nope, that's that's more like it. It's the penultimate match, match 20 out of 21. We've been here all weekend long at Academy Lanes in Haverhill, Massachusetts, bringing you Mixed Worlds competition, a 22-team round robin. Kathy <laughs> Boyd is the 8 bit hiding behind that spread eagle as well. Aims from the left side, got a skinny slice of it. Simultaneous delivery from Underwood leaves three on the right and the four pin. Underwood steals the extra pin. It's nine against the Kathy Boyd seven. Pin game just on pins alone. <laughs> Kathy Boyd went in Bradford, Massachusetts all her life. Brittany Underwood, Rockland, Massachusetts. Boyd takes out the triangle on the right side. Underwood, a half was <laughs> 
This one gets back in the pocket. And there's Wood headed towards the seven. Red line first, and it will drop. Nonetheless, at least nine. Brittany Underwood will need an out. Bob, when you have a chance, we'd all love to know the latest standings. I don't know if well, you have them here, but we'd love to know when you can. Penny Lane fell to Price's Wood Flooring on uh, on our affiliate Bowling Herd Network. Uh, Dan Esdale and uh, Paul Grant's broadcast down the road. So they are tied with Coca-Cola through. Uh, Great out by Underwood. Games to go right after after. Bowl 20 now, or is it, we're going to bowl 20 after 19. This is the 20th match now, right? Uh, yep, so anyway, 20 out of 21. Right next to us, Penny Lane is facing off against nothing to lose, and they are putting out, you know, putting out a charge. They're not rolling over for them. But uh, elsewhere, we got Coca Cola against Mark Cop Ford. And if, if both of the leaders make it through, we're going to see. Penny Lane down here uh, for the final match, right? Uh, look at the scoreboard. We've made two a... versus 17. Am I, actually, that might be Coca-Cola. Yeah, Coca-Cola is going to be here on this on this one. And uh, Team 17 is Price's Wood Flooring. Oh, my goodness. They're, they're right in the mix, too. Yeah, we've got two great matches to conclude this, no doubt. Yeah, Price's Wood Flooring only has three losses. So, they have a lot of... Oh, hit on, on, on that head one. Hit. Sean, Berryman. Sean Berryman collects it for the 10 box. And look at this one. Scotty Douglas almost with a high low jackpot. Eight to begin. Scott Douglas, one of the fastest deliveries in the game. He and brother Tim put on a tremendous ACS team pro match recently. You can watch that on YouTube on Spread Eagle Productions. Douglas' try on the head pit left a three and one split. Yeah, sure. Berryman's got players back there. One, three, five, six, eight, and nine, all now for the third ball. Scott's, Scott's balls have been clocked in the 37 to 39 mile an hour range. He, he, he's a little bit, a bit more deliberate than his brother. <laughs> Tim, on the other hand. As high as 46. He and Keith Pope are the only ones I've ever recorded at 46. <laughs> And of course, we have Josh Daly at 45. We saw Mark Weber earlier at 40. The most fun part is seeing some of the classic legends come back here from Mixed Worlds and still throwing only about 10 miles an hour less. It's still a very potent ball that can do a lot of damage. And you've seen it in some of the past matches we've had here. Of course, Nance Vesta says speed has nothing to do with it. <laughs> she, she's uh, uh, on the bench for uh, the Chuckers today. Look at all this late action for Dupree. Tom Dupree for Academy Chuckers against Chris Jones. Of course, when she told me that speed had nothing to do with it, Tom also was standing by and he said, well, you throw it as hard as you can and still, <laughs> still make it. It can't hurt. 42 miles an hour is what his average is. Jones just wide of the object, and that's nine. Let's see what dirt Paul's pulled up on them. Chris Jones, originally from Quincy, Massachusetts. Current average, 115. Dupree mixing the head pin, five and eight. He's throwing at 38 miles an hour. Woo! From right here, Averill. One of three teams from Academy. A, a, match, a matching 38 mile an hour pitch from Jones off the, on the three pin. We've seen Academy Chuckers against Team Goats earlier. You'll want to watch that match. Spare for Dupree against the 2 4. Jones just won. First mark of the game. Eight box. One pin on paper, but a mark for Academy Chuckers. Here come the anchors. I think I know what happened. I'll 
I'll tell you later. But Tim Douglas, here he is against Chuck DeRozier's. Trying to hold on to his title. I've, I've clocked him at 46 miles an hour twice. Once I've got Keith Beaupre. Chuck DeRozier's though, goes first. Grabs the right side. Oh, oh! Tim Douglas of Scorcher, and that gun says 43 miles an hour, and he left a 4-7. It's interesting, two for DeRozier's. Is it currently a seven pin? I can't quite see. That's four pins there. Ooh, I tripped on the front piece of wood, no go. Eight. An early four mark for one advantage. Oh, it was on. Uh, Penny Lane next to us on lanes 31 and 32. Well, it turned out the wood wasn't on, but the ball caroming wildly off the sidewall was. And Douglas gains two pins. There's DeRozier throwing it 39. 30, that's a scorcher too. And a 44 mile an hour pitch from Douglas. Four horsemen for DeRozier. the entire left side, left and center for Douglas. DeRozier's almost got to the seven pin. Woods kicked cap first off the wall and didn't go. It's in the way to Jason action. And delivers himself and just narrowly missed the head pin. The Wood came back and won't take it either. Maybe speed has a slight bit of effect on how this. Of course, if he did it. We needed all that extra Connecticut. Ten apiece. Tim Douglas, two pins in hand after that. Three so pins up. The high single still. He threw a 179 in game one, and it is still the high single. St stood up. And we saw all these bowlers. First match of the day, we saw Soroy's throw a huge string of his own. That's today, right? Yes. What was that 169? 169. Scott Saroyes. Britton. Ashley Britton takes out two on the first ball. Janet Pop. Let's go, Janet. High single, 197. Takes out three. Wood doesn't quite make it over to the three pin. Two more. Oh, so you got plenty on tap here from the past matches, and then two great matches to cap it off, is what I meant to say. Poke's Thank you. Down. Sorry, Bob. Poku uh, once, once threw in the mid 30s, uh, now throwing 24. She said she's told us that she's uh, got a lot of injuries. A great performance. Yeah, look Williams at that ball. Recently, oh. and she didn't miss that head pin by much. Maybe speed doesn't have everything to do with it. That's nine. Twenty-four plays twenty-five. Brenton holding her own. Brenton's throwing twenty-six. Ashley Brenton out of Woburn Bulletrome has been bowling since two thousand eight. Got into it thanks to her father. There's one. Got on the head, man, and no. Left the 3 5 10. Ashley Breton wants through the Woburn season high triple for women. What was that? Maybe that. Would that have been her 397? I triple 397, perhaps. She posts an eight and gets up to 32 through four. Uh, third ball is perfect. And just like last time, have some vocal supporters. It's hard not to get your money's worth when you go to watch a bowling match. Hello. It doesn't cost anything when it, most of the time, so. Well, it costs money to drive here, but apart from that, now yeah, you're getting your money's worth, let's be honest. Brittany Underwood's on the right side, Kathy Boyd on the left side. 
D Generation X and Academy Chuckers, respectively. That's a fantastic blend of black and green on the jersey, I have to say. Eddie Nichols, uh, sartorial wonder. Sartorial, yes, I know that word. Yes! You see the Webster Timberlanes logo on their shirt as well. Underwood oh. came back and almost got the 10. Boyd's got a cluster of five. There's a nine pin hiding as well. Got on the pocket, yes! The hay bale. Look at that, the green, the matching green ball for uh, Brittany Underwood. Fantastic aesthetic. Uh, yeah, then we got uh, two versus seven. And then Penny Lee. Under what slightly balance at the line. Took out a triangle of three. Kathy Boyd out of Academy Lanes. Washed out four. A listed average of 98 for her. Brittany Underwood lists her average as 95. Brittany is seven. After the four fill on the spare by Boyd, an eight box. All told, that's 38 through four. Six pin gap, one ball in hand for Academy Chuckers. Scott Douglas and Sean Berryman are next. The one thing I will say about Kathy and Brittany, both of them lists they started when they were very young, eight, seven and eight, respectively. Scott Douglas. With a sort of, what do we call it, a stutter step approach? He's got a hitch. Um, so did Clayton Kershaw, I guess. Yeah, I, I asked him about it. He's, there's something going on with his hand and his shoulder, too, during that, that he squares them up. And if they don't square up, Ooh, look at the late action! Oh, 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 the first one! The seven the generation. X. He made the seven three one nine spare. How did that happen? Oh, Dennis, Dennis, tell me how does that happen? Only in candlepin bowling. Too often you hit the thing you're aiming for and you get something terrible. Well. Let's not forget the times go. Miss by a mile and make everything. <laughs> hey. And then who needs a headpin anyway? Nine's fine. Sean Berryman up to 27 through three. Oh! Got a headpin. This time it's a blaster. He's got seven. Oh, that was and a wacky leap for sure. That. that was a strike ball. Good film, lady. This is six, seven, eight. The wood is cap is touching the right side, I think. Plays left and stuns the six with a loud pop. No spare. Yeah! Berryman and another hay bale. That's two. That's two. It's the hay. Still haven't figured out where that one came from. I, I say it's a Western Mass thing. I, I heard it on television, and I think it was I was listening to the Western Mass telecast. And I just thought it was a good, you know, it's, that's what it looks like to me, hey, Bill. <laughs> Bob Lee alongside my, me, my name is Greg Guillard, and along with all you friends watching us live here on Bowling Nerd Network and later after the fact on Spread Eagle Productions, this match is shaping up to be a good one. And right now, Tom Dupree on our left is on a spare film. First, Chris Jones, washed out. Kingpin stands two. Four horsemen, nope, and... Five and nine, I beg your pardon. Dupree on the three pin, got five. That's what I'm gonna go back and watch. <laughs> Jones tried it, a 10 pin stance. Dupree strike, full on the head pin, bouncing wood over to the 10 pin. That won't take it either, he's got goalposts. 
Tom Dupree, high single 180, high triple 390, high five 609, high 10, and aesthetically pleasing 1200. Nine apiece. Thirty-three through three for Tom Dupree, and twenty-six through three for Chris Jones. Chris Jones from Quincy, Massachusetts, average one fifteen. He, he crushed the pocket. Dupree will have to match this with a three, nine, and ten. And he just narrowly grabbed a slice of it. Narrowly missed grabbing a slice of it, I should say. It's tough to get two pins stacked up on top of each other, and unfortunately they all still stand for a seven box. Giving Chris Jones an immediate three pin gain. And the match continues to remain close. Chuck DeRozier's and Tim Douglas. Tim fires away, got the head pin. Huge action strike. That was a blister with a wacky sidewall carom. And what a great shot. Chuck DeRozier's is getting some sidewall action of his own. He's taken out the middle of everything, which is tough. So he's got no middle rows, and he's got that inner pin. One, seven, nine, ten. What is it? This two, trip the wood, and it takes out the one, nine. Two big blocks on the board for D Gen X. Rozier smacked the wood straight back in the two pin stand, and he's got an eight box. On paper a tie, but we see the mark advantage on the screen. Tim Douglas. On a strike bill. Did he throw the same ball? It looks good going down. He's got eight already. He kicked out the 10 pin. That was something. That, that's what a hay bale looks like for me, that, 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 that pitch. After, after, if I, if I could only throw 44 miles an hour, that's what it is. Oh, he grabbed on the wood. It didn't carry. Picked up an extra pin on the strike, fill for a nine. 39 through three. DeRozier's needs an out against the four horsemen. Douglas is trying wide. No. He's cooking up a 48 through four to start. DeRozier's, ooh. I thought he got the outside of the head pin. Guess not. It turns out to be a seven box. Katie Durant, your piece is ready. The margin is 11. <laughs> Ashley and Janet coming back up. Remember, folks, this is the penultimate match. After this, we will know, well, we probably will know who will win that $10,000 grand prize. Oh, we could come down to a tie. Um, there are two teams tied right now. Coca-Cola and Penny Lane both have two losses. Uh -oh. And so here we're going to see Coca-Cola on the television lanes. And we were, I was just talking to um, Mike McGinty. His, his team is going to be battling Marcotte Ford on lanes 27 and 28, just a couple, a couple down. Uh, I think we're going to put a team of broadcasters on each one. And if they both win, if they both win out, Right now, uh, the horseman tries spare. Oh Ashley Brenton against the four horsemen right side gets it down. <laughs> if they both win out, there will be a one game playoff. Janet Pock needs an out here. She's had some good third balls so far. She found it. Oh, there it is. No. Well, she found the head pin. Took out three. Two full. <laughs> As if there's something you can do about it being too full. I, I, I spoke, just that call. I've, I've spoken to so many different bowlers. They have to aim for the middle. You have to aim for being too full because if you miss by a half an inch, you're in great shape. Right. 
Something 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 bell curve, I guess. That's on the head pin! Holy! Breton will be happy with that. It's a 51 half. <laughs> The blue tips. I have a substitution. We'll get a name in just a moment. Forty ninth or six for slot number one. And Kathy Boyd, right? Now Kathy Boyd. This is Kathy Boyd, so our, our scoreboard was correct. No, I, no, is, Scores are definitely correct as we see it. Yeah, Boyd's in, in her spot right now. Yeah, Neilan substituted for Pac just okay. now, okay. mid visit. There you go. There you go. Which is rarely seen, usually you let the two out. Right, there you go. Yeah. Spare! Oh, there she goes! One, four, seven, nine! Picks up some energy from uh, Ashley. Low Underwood trying to pick up a oh, similarly oh, tricky oh. shot! And did she ever! It's, it's gaining, it's gaining. Another dandy. I've seen it happen a few times during league night like this, where uh, just people start connecting. Nice oh, try. It's right. mixing back right. there. Scores correct as listed. That's 21 pin plus ball advantage for DJNX. Yeah. Perfect! Four and two. And another dandy. By Brittany Underwood. Friends, I'm telling you, we always save the best for last. The best boxes for last. The best strings for last. In the course of this tournament. And thank you to all our loyal fans who have been sticking with us for as much as you can. Sean Berryman working on that. Uh, pick up the hay bale from the fourth. Here he comes. He's got two so far. Wait, wait for it. King pin falling. Three pin falling. Two pin tapped. Nothing new. And Scott the right time. Half Worcester. Woods sticking out there. Wow, the seven pin just stood up somehow. Douglas needs an out. Still eight pins for Scotty Douglas to work on. Yeah, it takes ten. And that'll be a two, two, three times. Ooh, a three hole. Ooh, 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 ooh. That's an immediate swing of a mark. All right, the 245 to 237. Still three on the board for um, D Generation X. Did you see how that teammate Chatter put a smile back on Douglas's face? No. He's got the two pin, but there's the angle, and he's got. The, if he makes a spread eagle shot, he'll get yeah. it. That's, that's the skeleton of a spread eagle. <laughs> I'm afraid to dissect that metaphor further. 
Roger stand to his third ball. Look at that one! Oh my goodness! Look through all manner of directions. And no that's, Loma. Ten pin. That's got a rise out of everyone. And stay up. Nine box. 54 through six. I'm in 61 through six. Chris Jones, Tom Dupree. Scotty Douglas reveling in his two. <laughs> My only hope is that the humor of everything is translating through. The hype of everything is translating through. And the excitement of being here. Pin clear set just fine. I just hope it translates you through to you watching here on YouTube and Facebook. Dupree oh, horseman. Oh. Why does that seven stand? Hang on. Is it standing? standing? Yeah. Well, this didn't want to take any chances, so we went right after the seven. <laughs> oh, no. Ooh, Dupree oh. Cherry picks the head pin. Joseph's try on the three pin. He's got to mix this time. Woods screaming back. Four pin drops the wrong way. One, two. Dupree, nine box. Solid nine. And Jones fills eight and a nine box. So 17 all told, and that's a 53 half. Dupree got the headman this time. Kingman got tapped, but doesn't drop. And we have another member of the 40 mile an hour club, Tom Dupree, 40 miles an hour on that last pitch. Oh, baby. <laughs> Stealthily in the back, Chris Jones dropped out the eight pin, and Wood is railing against the one and two pin. Forms a rail against the one and two, I should say. Dupree has the five pin with a cap first piece of wood. Oh, got around it. Thank you. Well placed ball, and it cooperates. Jones, Wood comes back with a seven, yes. And a spare to match. So both folks will sit down on those marks. DJ Next still with a healthy advantage, but Academy Chuckers, no shortage of life in them. Here's Chuck to Rogers and Tim Douglas for DJ Next. Coming up on lanes 33 and 34. The Rogers got on the head pin. He's got on the 10 pin. Yes, the corner does drop out. Douglas! Tim disappointed to find the 4 and 2 after a pocket shot. Tim lives in Marshfield, Massachusetts. DeRozier gets a spare. Douglas did take out three, got out of triangle, and he'll have a chance to at least get nine out of here. Tough for a righty to get the right side of the lane. Got the wood, he snapped it over, that's ten. Man, is that fun to watch. 58 half. Sparefield to Rogers. Wood came off the sidewall. He's going to get some late action, and he's got seven. Brings up the 50 half. Douglas has got the head pin. Straightened off the curtain so much, a pit, few pins came back. Nine pin is hiding back there as well. Two, three, four, six, nine, ten. DeRozier has the three, four, and seven. Wood in front of the four, seven. Plenty fine. Just missed the three pin. Ball carries back anyway. That would have been fair. Nothing new. Douglas, object pin. That's it. Chuck 
Rocher said, well, never mind. A little nervous about that piece of that ball in the channel, but he got it. It's fair for it to remain in there because it's not on the plate. That is my rule. Tim Douglas unlucky to get a six out of that. That six is the advantage right now for DJ X on paper. It's 297 to 291. That's the look after the first ball. Sherelle Nealon substituting in after the sixth box. Third ball is coming up for each. Ashley Breton. Oh, what a shot! That gets the ten. Look at this one. No fill, no fill, but good bounce back. Ten apiece. Good resilience, and now they found the range. Six pins still the advantage. Tails into the head pin. Crossed over, in fact. Good mix and has the 10 pin. Red line should be fine. Jerome gets on the head pin. And a strike. The eight was the last of four. Oh, double wood. Rejected by the wall. Bob Lee is making mental notes so we can update our last of all countdown on Spread Eagle Productions. Nine bucks for Ashley Breton. Reminds me, I have a study I haven't finished about which, which is most frequently the last of, last of all. I, 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 I collected hundreds and hundreds. I was, I was trying to do it by lefties versus righties to see if there was a difference. You know what? The five pin is most frequently the last of all. The king stands a lot. I'm sorry to have said that aloud as Underwood does exactly that. Although, that actually might be good if perhaps only a seven fill. It's a good fill. Boy, that's three. This is Dicey Wood. Underwood plays the slightly low to red line and doesn't get it. Boyd's got a nine pin hiding back there. Catches a piece of the head pin, yes! Ooh! Game of inches, yes! On the head pin. All deflected off the head pin. And the tide is turning. Academy Chuckers. Down 10 on paper, but two bonus balls in hand. Three bonus balls to one. Whoa. That was too much of a peek behind the curtain. Underwood's eighth box is oh on the goodness. head pin. What's rolling? You know, that could be worse. I don't know if it's going to turn to a spare, but it's not off. Boyd. Jesus. Five, seven, ten. Good fill. Picking her pick of pockets. Ten over par. Assuming par is ten a box. This wood is it. screaming across. Do it. Eight into seven, but not the four. Points on the five men. That's perfect. Point down the middle and gets an eight. 88 through eight. 80. Is it 80 through eight? Oh, Ashley. Let's go, Sean. Let's go. 
Scott Douglas will need a mark to keep pace. Go, Sean. Ball on the three pin. Action came over to the left side. He's got the one, two, six, seven, eight, ten. Derogers. It's Berryman, excuse me. Half Worcester. Scott got the half Worcester the other side. That's four pins for the out. Berryman. Okay, six drops. Both bowlers down to the last four pins. I'm going to take a little break, check on the standings and the uh, Jason Bull um, matches right next to us. So Penny Lane has, has a commanding lead over another one. Can't wait. Sevens apiece. Seven punched out. Now that two pin flew forwards is beyond me. There's Wood coming out. John Merriman. Another punch. Scott Douglas into the one four, doesn't carry the seven. Scott Douglas, we've seen on May and ACSD match, including against Tim Douglas. If you want to watch that on Spread Eagle Productions? That was a good one. Depending on who you ask. 71 through 8. And does pick up three pins as a result. This should be correct. Nope, I had it right the first time. 358 to 350. Friends, friends, we've got a good one going. Spare a piece coming up for Chris Jones and Tom Dupree. Right and left. For the Webster sponsor team, DJ X Jones, half Worcester on a fill. Dupree, likewise, no blood. This leave is pretty when it goes. Jones just on the outside. Dupree. Boy, this is where Candlepin gets at its toughest, having to work for every pin. <laughs> Scott Douglas celebrating, you remember earlier. Dupree does get an out and gets an eight. Swinging the momentum. Scott Douglas was facing the half Worcester left earlier. Now Chris Jones, big hit. 2-5. Two Dupree. 1-2-10. Two Jones, yes. Stuns the wood in. Dupree's third ball. One, two. Almost it's bad. Heck. Nine. Nine is fine. Keeps him in it. Three pin match. A lot of pins flying, folks. Hope you're enjoying it. We're on, live on Bowling Nerd Network on Facebook and, of course, always on demand after the fact on YouTube. Spread Eagle Productions. Don't forget, for more great bowling like this, subscribe on YouTube to Spread Eagle Productions. It's free! Chuck Rogers got the pins collapsing forwards, but not into the two. That's all he's got for the spare. Tim Douglas, two and one. Any more to the right, he could have had the angle. Rogers, yes, on the pin. Tim Douglas, eight box. 
One box left for these anchors before we go down the stretch. First, let's see how Chuck DeRozier does on this bonus ball. You remember him from the semi-pro division. Only the same division as Corey Alisi, Tony Levesque, and Paul Atkinson Jr. Hey. Douglas has try on the head pin. Five and dime. Probably mentioning earlier the Kingpin's the last to fall. Definitely the most stubborn one we've seen throughout this tournament. DeRozier slept the three, four, six, and ten. His fill is six. Seventy-five through seven. Bob Lee roving about looking for scores and standings. We'll have that for you as soon as we get the chance. Douglas' the second ball is wide. DeRozier's. Three, six, ten, and four. Chuck DeRozier's with a three and one conversion. Puts Academy Chuggers decisively ahead. And he's getting high fives from everyone watching within iShot. If they're watching not from iShot, I guess they're watching live. I don't know. Starts out with six pins, Breton with three. Sherelle Nealon has the one, three, seven, and ten. Substituted for Janet Mock partway through the visit, literally on the second half. And Nealon still is six on that strike. And a six box. So a profit of two all told. And Ashley Bretton completes a 10 box to keep, keep her team in it. Margin is 17. Bretton goes at the same time. Huge hit! Scott Douglas imploring that four pin to drop. Wood stands in front of it instead. Nealon, no sleepers, just the post on the 10. That's it. Just tailed away from the head pick as Breton makes the spare. And, and we'll have that bonus ball. She's going 11. Nealon's ball tails away, completing a combined 89 straight for Janet Bach and Sherelle Nealon. Yeah, Craig, I have a few updates from down the range. And it's, actually, we got a, a spare field come out. I'll, I'll wait for the. Ashley Brenton on a 10th frame yeah. bonus ball. The fill is a head pin and it's five. Unless this wood does anything, it will not. Very close match here. <laughs> that looks like 415 to 414 on the board. Is that right? Oh, because I shortchanged him. My goodness. All right, so it's a one-pin lead here, but uh, down down the lanes, next door I told you Penny Lane has the match well in hand by 90 or more over nothing to lose. The Hurricanes have a lead over Stars and Strikes. Uh, Another um, Hurricanes lead? That's right. Six, seven for Boyd, those pins fell one at a time. Team Goat and Bottom Shelf are head to head, are, are, are even, but Team Goat has one bonus ball. JD's Seamless Gutter leads by 15 over Team King. Price's Wood Flooring has a 50 pin lead over High Low Dispensary. Six pin didn't quite open. make it to the seven. Coca Cola has a 29 pin lead late against Marcock Ford. Uh, Huff Power Sports leads by 35 over New England Flooring. And uh, we have Drywall Concepts leading over New England Flooring by 45. And Universal Screening holds a 30-pin lead over PCM Price. All matches are, are late. Greg? Thank you very much. I had a momentary power flicker that caused some excitement. I think, our, I think everything helped. <laughs> We're not drawing that much power, are we? That's a two-pin match, Boyd. And Underwood delivers simultaneously. Boy, it's the one, two, seven. Underwood, four horsemen and an eight pin. Oh, 
Apologies for the occasional scoring errors. This is now correct, of course. Tough to juggle everything. As we split the party with Paul Grant and Dan Esdale bringing you action from down the lanes. Lloyd gets 10. Underwood just 7. 96 for Underwood. And 108 for Kathy Boyd. One mark apiece, the margin still five. Now here's Sean Berryman and Scott Douglas. Berryman with one spare, the string. Yikes, got the four. Well, it would normally be the four, five, seven, five, six, ten. Uh -oh. Again, Scott Douglas is a half Worcester. Again, that's the one. He's found that uh, three hole many times. It happened again while they were away, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, jeez. Now, Merriman's down the middle. Half Worcester is makeable. It's tough, and it's too full. Against the eight box, still a chance to grab the three on the left and keep base. No, no. But it's down the middle and a five. Three pins gained there. Puts it into park territory, mm -hmm. where uh, D Generation X has to has, has to pick up a mark. Depending on the spare fills, of course. We won't know until we see. Barry in first with the tenth box. Kaliri. Douglas on the three pin as well. I mean, it means by that, I mean the extra mark. You know, both both teams are apt to have a mark in the next five boxes, but they're. I don't know. Look at that. On the oh. four horsemen notes. That gosh darn inner pin. That wood is flat against the plate for Douglas, nope. you know, more or less. A little off. It was a little off the plate, I meant to say. Left with a 2 7. That's nine. Merriman completes a 92, and Scott Douglas. And 85. Eight pin lead holds. Four to play. Chris Jones in the bonus. Pants have been and tough. Chuck DeRozier's for Academy will will be in the bonus after eight as well. Chris Jones first, of course. Ooh, Dubree ooh, stunner, ooh. and he's got that inner layer untouched. Five, eight, nine, ten. It's That's a tough house Academy. If you don't get the five pin, you don't get much at all. Jones, big sidewall bounce. What's gonna fly away here? So this is one, two, nine, and ten. You got a six fill on that. Yes! You got it! Yes! Got it! Oh. Spare against open for Dupree. Swings the dial. Another two pins. That's a Coach Academy in command. Four pins and two balls. Well, I guess when you do get the five pin, by contrast, anything's possible. And Tom Dupree demonstrates it here. The man from right here in Haverhill. Oh. And the drops. Well, and for the first time in a long time, I was getting jokingly worried for Al Johnson. One dollar. Handle pins for cancer. Just away. He gets the head pin anyway. Happy to have the carry. That would that roll all the way to the middle of the way. Whoa. How far is it going to roll? I don't think we have time to find out. Who am I to say? It might hit the gutter. Needs another inch or two. That's quite there impressive. It goes, there it goes. Let's go. And it's gone. No need to go out and fetch. Jones has seven pins to aim at. Blows out five of them. 
that'll minimize the variance. Dupree picks a stick and gets nine for a 98 string. Jones crosses triple digits with that last ball, 101. All right, Dupree is four, but DeRocher's in the bonus. Timmy Douglas is going to need at least a couple marks, wouldn't you say? Depending on the fill, we'll see. Oh, yeah, yeah, let's see. The, the needs to fill first. If he does... I'm, I'm, I'm giving him five or six in my mind, but I, but I need to... I should probably pay attention to what he actually does. Average fill, but that's why you play the game. What a fun match. And we got another great one coming up for the final match of the day. DeRocher Spareville washes out seven. And he does get the fill he was after. Tim Douglas gets late pinfall. He does get somewhat of a break. One, two, six, and ten. DeRocher's rang the six pin, even though he got it in the pocket. That's that's pretty rare with Douglas. Outside on it, Woods rolling. Two six. Significant pins for Douglas. Cuts 11. the lead to 11, but it's a double digit lead with yeah. one box to go. So, what does that mean, Greg? Needs, needs a, mar a mark in pins to be lost or a double. Yeah, that's right. So Chuck with it with a 10 forces a double. Oh, okay. Interesting. That increases the significance. This one's on the head pin. You and needed the three that. You really needed that three to fall. It's definitely possible now. And look at that. A quarter. A quarter. Three down, seven to go. It's so two storylines right now. Douglas got on the red line. Oh, no. There's Wood rolling across. It's the two oh! and drops it. <laughs> Tim Douglas. <laughs> Does come up big in the tenth. How did that one not fall? Put the. Put the this has to be much. That is three. A one o five. That means four. Four to tie. Five to win. Four to tie. Phil. What a turn of events. Four. Four to tie, five to win. Final ball coming up next. We have confirmed it with the, with the official score. We are correct. It's 492 to 488 at the moment. Tim Douglas is one strike, one spare. Deals away, lands on the three pin, and he got a four. We're tied. We tied it. What a wild and wacky ending. 492 each. 42 miles an hour on that final pitch, and a tie. <laughs> We've had like. Yeah, a half Worcester, quarter Worcester, and then through the, through the two in, in fact, Bob, by my count, I think that was the second time D-Generation X has been involved with. Well, this score will even up. But I think we better get ready for the finale now. One last match to come, live on Bowling Nerd Network, and of course on YouTube's Red Eagle Productions. Until next time, until very soon, of course, that's Bob Lee. My name's Greg Guillard. We'll Thank see you, you on the lane. See you soon.